praise the Lord. Um, thank you all so much for being here. Um, hear the word of God being preached. And, you know, there's nothing better that we can be doing than listening to God's word. Yes. And, uh, and abiding by him. That's but right. uh, So, if I had a title for this message today, it would be That I Am. That I am. Amen. So um, with that, let's turn to first or no, Second Corinthians chapter four, starting at verse one. That's page one thousand three hundred seventy-one. One thousand three hundred seventy one. So that I am. So before I get into that, that I am, just kind of want to lay some groundwork. You know, there's, there's uh, you know, two types of people, you know, they're saved and unsaved. You know, those that are saved and being saved and those that are unsaved. You know, and there's only two destinations. There's no purgatory. You know, I, I want, there, there's, there's uh, you know, no just going to sleep, being destroyed. That's right. There's two places that we're going to go for eternity. That's heaven and that's hell. Right. So, you know, I just want to be as, as straightforward, as blunt as I can, because, you know, I don't want to lollygag and mess around right. when people's souls are at stake. Yeah. You know, everyone's soul here will have to stand before God one day right. and give an account, every single one of us. Man. So I'm going to have to give an account for what I say, and every single one of you are going to have to give an account before God. And God can see right through us. He can see right. through our soul. He knows our whole lives in one moment of time. Right. He can see everything. And so when we stand before him, you know, what are we going to say? When we have to give an account, and it's a scary thing. It's a, it's a fearful thing fall into the hands of the living God. But uh, with that, you know, let's get into the word. You know, there's two types of people, those that are saved and being saved, and then those that are lost. And, uh, you know, God has made everything so clear, so clear. And he's given us so many signs. He's put it on our consciences. So that we're going to be without excuse when we stand before him. Right. You know, he's given us his word, That's right. his living word, Amen. that a lot of us neglect way too much. You know, but this is the guide. This is the guide of how we should be living our lives. This is the guide of where we're going to go. Because you know, we're all going somewhere. Yeah. But if, if, you don't, if you're not using your map, you're going to get lost. You're not going to get where you need to go. If you, don't, if, you, if you don't know exactly how to get to that destination without the map, you're going to be lost. Right. This is the only map God's given. So That's right. let us heed his word. Let us have reverence for his word. And um, so with that, um, I'm just going to pray and get into it because there's a lot of scripture and little time. Amen. Um, Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for another week we can come here, Lord, and hear your word being preached, Lord. I just ask that you fill me with your Holy Spirit, God, that you help me to preach your word faithfully and in truth, Lord, that you open up our hearts, our eyes, and our ears to see your word, Lord, and to act upon it, Lord. Lord, help us. Help these men. If there's any that are lost here tonight, Lord. Help them so that they can see your word, that they can come to your son, Jesus Christ. They could be saved, Lord. I don't want to see any of these men go to hell, Lord. It would be a shame if any of them just sitting here before the preaching of your word, Lord, and rejecting it and dying and burning in hell for the rest of eternity, Lord. I don't want that for any of them. I want to see us all in heaven one day and rejoicing in your presence, Lord. And Lord, I just ask that you help me. Help us all, Lord. We need you. In Jesus Christ, and then we pray. Amen. All right. So first, 
2 uh, Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, Amen. and ourselves your servants for Jesus Christ's sake. So, you know, we're... Me and these men were saved. God has had mercy on us. Now he's given us this ministry, you know, so that we can use the word of God, that we can serve you guys. We want to see y'all saved. We're, we don't want to handle deceitfully, you know, and craftiness. No, we want to rightly divide the word, you know, and commend ourselves to all of your consciences. We want to... Press the gospel into your conscience, into your mind, into your soul, into your spirit. But there's somebody that hinders us from doing that, from, from, from pressing this into your mind. If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. The God of this world is the devil. See, that's a little G God. It's the devil. And he literally blinds the minds of unbelievers that they will not see these plain truths that, the God, that God has given out, that the one and only true God, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ should shine unto them. Satan blinds our minds. When we're unsaved, he, we literally cannot see the light. He blinds our minds. But God wants us to be saved. Amen. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So I just hope and pray that if any of you have a blinded mind to the gospel, that God would open your eyes so that you can see the light, so that you can come to Christ Amen. and be saved. So we preach not ourselves, but Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. You know, we're not here for ourselves. Oh, you know, we're not getting paid for this. Yeah. You know, there, there's so many other things we could be doing, but we're here because we love you guys, and we want to see y'all saved. We want to see y'all in heaven one day, and we want to see y'all grow in the Lord. And so, you know, we're your servants for Jesus' sake. Amen. And, but, you know, a lot of people have blinded minds. And you'll, I hope y'all see the stark contrast between people that are blinded and people that see the light. People that cannot hear God's word and people that do hear and do believe and do come to the truth. So let's go to Matthew chapter 13. This is page 1140. Matthew chapter 13, 1140. Let's see what Jesus has to say Man. about this very important truth. 1140. And let's start chapter 13, verse 9. <laughs> Who hath ears to hear? Let him hear. Yeah. Who hath ears to hear? Do you have ears to hear God's word? I'm asking you truthfully, honestly. It's so important. Who hath ears to hear? Let him hear. Jesus just spake a parable to these people, a wonderful parable about the, the, the sower, and the seed, and the grounds. Yeah. And then, and the disciples came and said unto him, 
Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Why is Jesus speaking in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. Amen. Amen. Do you have ears to hear? Are you listening to God's word right now? Jesus speaking. Because he says there's many people that have closed their eyes, They're, they have dulled ears, their heart is wax gross, and they can't hear the word of God. Amen. It's a prophecy that goes way back, and still to this day is plaguing people. Right. That people don't have ears to hear the word. People have shut eyes, they're blinded, their minds are blinded, their, their, their vision is, is blurred when it comes to the precious things of God. Yeah. And so we also see God wants us to give us things. And he said, he that hath shall be given more. So he'll, he'll have an abundance. God wants to give you these precious truths that are found in his word. Amen. But he who hath not will he'll have everything taken away. Even what he thinks he has, it'll all be taken from him. So God wants to save you. He wants you to have an abundant life in Christ. But if you don't hear his word, if, if, you're, if your heart's wax grows, you've dulled your ears, you've tuned God out, there's no saving you. Even, even the, the little things that you have on this life, the temporary things, it's all going to pass away. Yeah. This life is so short. Yeah. It's like a vapor. It's gone the moment it, it, the moment it comes out. This life is so short. You know. And I just had a cousin pass away. You know, He was 33 years old. Died from cancer. I was so aggressive. There's nothing they could have done for him. Did he think he was going to die? You know, 10 years ago, 5 years ago? No. Like, but it happened so quick. None of us know when our time is. So let's heed God's word. Let's soften our hearts. God can soften your heart so that you can hear his word, that you can open up your ears, open up your eyes. Lift the veil off your eyes. Because, you know, Satan has power, but God has more power Amen. beyond belief. And he can lift that veil. He can open up blind eyes. Amen. He can make them see. He can open up deaf ears so that they can hear. And so with that, you know, we see there's people. They have blinded minds. They have dull ears. They have closed eyes, and then there's people that have open hearts, open eyes, open ears to hear God's word. Amen. You know, so with that, let's go to the I am. You know, let's turn to Exodus chapter 3, verse 13. This is page 73. Page 73. Let's find out who that I am is. Page 73, Exodus chapter 3, starting at verse 13. And so this is when God had commissioned Moses to go 
set his people free. You know, God's people were in bondage at this time. They were slaves to the Egyptians. And God was commanding Moses to go and tell Pharaoh to let his people go, to bring deliverance to his people. And, and then this is a conversation that Moses was having with God in the burning bush. We, most of us should know that story. So verse 13, And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I am come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. God is the I am. Amen. He's always been. He always will be. Sir. He is the I am that met Moses in the burning bush. He's eternal. He's outside of time. Amen. And so that's what God said for Moses to tell the children of Israel. I am that I am. That's who God is. There is no other God. Amen. He is the I am. And I know somebody who uses that phrase. We use that too often. I am, I am, I am. But the true I am, Jesus Christ, he has so many I am's in the book of John. It's amazing. Yeah. That's an amazing study in and of itself. But let's turn to John. John chapter 8, verse 12. This is page 1,261. So we're going to look at a few I am's that Jesus uses. And it, it, it is amazing. Chapter eight. chapter 8. So page 1,261. This is chapter 8. Verse 12. And this is a long chapter, <laughs> but it's amazing. Uh, so Jesus says, Then spake Jesus unto them, again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Amen. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself, thy record is not true. Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. For I know whence I came and whither I go, but ye cannot tell whence I come and whither I go. Ye judge after the flesh, I judge no man. And yet, if I judge, my judgment is true, yeah. for I am not alone, right. but I and the Father that sent me. Amen. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me beareth witness of me. Then said they unto him, Where is thy father? Jesus answered, Ye neither know me nor my Father. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. Right. See, so we see the contrast between the unbelieving world and That's Jesus right. Christ. Amen. He's saying, He is the light of the world. Amen. And if you follow Him, you will not walk in darkness. Amen. The devil wants you blinded, walking in darkness, right. not knowing where you're going. But if you follow Jesus, he is the light of life. He can direct your steps. But you see these people, they don't know God. They yeah. think that they know God. Yeah. They're Pharisees. They're, they're leaders of the Jewish religion. That's right. You know, every, all, all these men looked up to him. They're, they're like high esteem. But they didn't even see God in the flesh. They were so blinded by the devil. They shut their eyes, they dulled their hearts, they closed their ears. They couldn't even see God right in front of them. Right. The light of life. And he says, ye neither know me nor my father. If ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. 
If you know Jesus, you know the Father. Amen. If you know Jesus, you know God. If you see Jesus, you see God. Amen. And so these words spake Jesus in the treasury as he taught in the temple. And no man laid hands on him, for his hour was not yet come. Yeah. Let's go on. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Whither I go, ye cannot come. Ye cannot come. Then said the Jews, Will he kill himself, because he saith, Whither I go, ye cannot come? And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world. I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Right, See, these people were so blinded. That's right. But Jesus says, if you don't believe that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Amen. It means judgment, fire, burning in hell. Dying in your sins, being judged of God, you know, and, and that's God right in the flesh. He's not of this world. He's saying clearly, let's go on. Then said they unto him, who art thou? And Jesus saith unto them, even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. I have many things to say unto you to say and to judge of you. But he that sent me is true. And I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. Right. See, they had their understanding darkened. That's right. They couldn't even see. He's been saying for this whole time that he is the Christ, you know, but it was hid to them. They couldn't see it. They couldn't understand it. What he was saying, that he was speaking to them of God, that he is the I am. But Amen. let's go on, let's go on. Then said Jesus unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself. But as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. And he that sent me is with me. And the Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Yeah. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Yeah. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Man. Man. So it's his word. Yeah. It's yeah. the word of God. If you continue in his word, you'll know the truth. You won't be blinded. Man. You'll know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Amen. It'll make you free. You know, you, you won't be in bondage anymore. And these people, they couldn't even see that they were in bondage. Let's go to verse 33. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? <laughs> Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. Amen. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. Amen. If the son therefore shall make you free, Ye shall be free indeed. Amen. Jesus can set you free. These men, you know, they didn't think that they were in bondage, but sin will put you in bondage. Yes, it will. If you sin, you're a slave to sin. Yes, sir. It's like you have invisible chains leading you and dragging you along, telling you what to do. No. But they couldn't even see that. But Jesus says that he can set us free. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Jesus Christ can set you free. 
He can break those chains. He can help us to not be a servant of sin, but a servant of the Lord. Then he goes on, I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me. A man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God, this did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they unto him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. So, just now, you know, they're the seeds of Abraham, you know, God's chosen people. But they're like, oh, we, we're, we're, we're Abraham's children. Jesus says, if you were Abraham's child, you would hear my word. You would do the works of Abraham. But he said, you're of your father. And, and they, they're like, ah, no, no, now their father's God. You know, it's not Abraham. Now their father's God. You know, and, and, you know, we're not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. You know, but Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. God sent him. And if we love God, we would love Jesus. We would love his word. And then Jesus says, Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Jesus tells us the truth, plain as day, and people still didn't believe him because they are of their father, the devil. devil. And the works of their father they will do. If we're of the devil, we're not going to love Jesus. We're not going to embrace his word. We're going to reject the truth. He says, because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. It's amazing. He could tell you the truth and you still don't believe because you're of your father, the devil. And you want to do the works of your father. Kill, steal, destroy, blaspheme, lie. You know, but Jesus goes on. He says, which of you convinceth me of sin? Nobody could. He was sinless. He's asking them. I I bet he could have told every single... I know he could. He could have told every single sin of every single man in that room. That's right, man. That's it. But they're trying to find something to accuse him with. He says, which of you convinces me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you believe me not? So they can't even convince him of sin. They... He's never spoke a lie in his life. And so by default, everything that he's saying is true. So he's asking them, if I say the truth, why do ye believe not believe me? Then he says this amazing statement. He that is of God heareth God's words. He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. I, I want every single one of you to ask yourselves, Amen. are you hearing the word of God Amen. right now? Are you hearing Jesus Christ speak? Amen. He that is of God heareth God's words. Then he says, ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Yeah. Then answered the Jews, And said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? Jesus answered, I have not a devil, 
but I honor my father, and ye do dishonor me. So he's telling them the truth, and all they can do is accuse him of being devil-possessed, right. accuse him of being a Samaritan. You know, Samaritans were, were, were like half-breeds to them. You know, not fully Jew. They were, they, were, they were looked down upon. Like, it was an insult. You know, and he's telling them, you're, you're dishonoring me. Be, I honor my father, and ye do, do dishonor me. And I seek not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Sure. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. It's a bold statement. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets. And thou sayest, If a man keep my saying, he shall never taste death. Now he's got really riled up. Yeah. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead? And the prophets are dead? Who makest thou thyself? Who are you? The prophets are dead. And you're saying if, if, if somebody hears your word and keeps your word, he'll never see death? Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I should be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his sayings. Yeah. See, Jesus, he doesn't hold back. No, he no. tells the, the bold truth in the face of all kinds of adver adversity. He tells it like it is. He says, you don't know God. It's plain and simple. I, I, if... If I said I didn't know God, I'd be a liar like you. Yeah. No. And then he goes on to say, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. Man. Abraham yep. lived hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years before. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and, thou hast, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Amen. Saying before Moses, before, before the prophets, before all of them, before Abraham was, I am. Amen. And they knew exactly what he was saying right there. Yes, sir. Then, took they up stones to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. So we see these unbelieving, unsaved Jewish people having this controversy with Jesus. God in the flesh, right before them, the one who the Father sent, the Son of God, Christ, and they're trying to kill him. They're trying to find ways to accuse him. They don't want to believe his word. Right. Because it's too convicting. That people love their sin. They don't want to hear the word of God. Okay. They want to stay in their sin. They don't want to believe that there's a That's day right. of judgment. Right. But Jesus says, there is one that seeketh and judgeth. Right. And then he goes on to say, he is the I am. Amen. He is God. He's sure. the one that's going to judge. And, and they were smart enough to know what he was saying. You know, I, I hope we're all smart enough to see, clear as day, who he was claiming that he was. Amen. God in the flesh. Sure. If, sure. You're not, if you can't see that, the devil's blinded your mind. Amen. God in the flesh. You can't hear his word. You can't see his word. You have a blinded mind. So I think we have enough time for another, an another passage. Let's turn a page over. It's another I am. So this is John chapter 10, verse 1. 
It's uh, page 1,265. This is Jesus talking. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Amen. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him. For they know not the voice of strangers. So I don't know if you've seen any videos of these shepherds, you know, old fashioned shepherds. They got a bunch of sheep. People are trying to call like they got a a row of people calling "Eh, eh," or whatever. You know, and and it's, you know, person after person. They're trying to, you know, call the sheep. The sheep are all over there doing their own thing. But when the shepherd comes and he does his call, woo! All the sheep come in, like, all, all at once. It's, it's an amazing thing. I would definitely suggest looking it up, just finding, you know, a uh, shepherd calling the sheep. It's amazing. He does the call. They know his voice. Yes, amen. And they follow him. Yes. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth, because he is an hireling, and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. As As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay my life down. I lay down my life that I might take it up again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. Yes, sir. Amen. There was division, therefore, among the Jews for these sayings. And many of them said, He hath a devil, and is mad. Why hear ye him? Others said, These are not the words of him that hath a devil. Can the devil open the eyes of the blind? This is so weird. They were both, these people were both hearing the same words. But they came to different conclusions. They came to different, same words. He was speaking to everybody. My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. I am the good shepherd. I am the door. But some said he had a devil. And some said, these aren't the words of a devil. And it was at Jerusalem, the Feast of Dedication, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple of Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. But Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, 
because ye are not my, of my sheep. Yeah. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I, will give, I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my, my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Yes, amen. So we see the good shepherd. He laid down his life on the cross. He shed his precious blood yes. so that your sins could be covered, amen. that you can walk free, that you can have eternal life. Amen. Are you going to hear his word? Are you going to believe on him? Or are you going to continue to walk in disbelief? Are you going to continue to reject the perfect shed blood of the cross? Are you going to trample it like it's an unclean, unholy thing? Because in the eyes of God, that's one of the greatest disrespect we can do right. to him, right. to what he's done for us. He paid it all for us. Man. And how can we do something so foolish? How can we reject so great salvation. In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1, it says, How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Right. It's not because if you neglect it, you reject it. If you don't receive it, you reject it. That's right. By default. That's right. So Jesus has laid down his life. He came. Are you hearing his voice right now? Sure. He said, if you hear my voice, my sheep will follow me. His sheep will follow him, and he will give them eternal life. Do you hear his voice? Are you following him? We all need to answer that question. We have to ask ourselves, do we hear his voice? Are we following him? Because if we are his sheep, we will follow him. And when we follow him, we're in his hands. And we're in Christ's hands. And then the Father's hand is right over that. No man can pluck him out. Amen. No man can pluck you out of the Father's hands. Amen. You will have eternal life. I just ask you all to ask yourselves, are you right. hearing the word of God? Amen. And if you're not, ask God to open your heart, open your eyes, open your ears. And he will. He will. If you come to him humbly, sincerely, he will do it. So, just hope to follow the Good Shepherd, have eternal life. It's a free gift. It's offered to all of us. So, if you have any questions, you can come to us. We can show you from the scriptures how you can receive that gift. You just call upon Him. You believe that He died for your sins on the cross. He shed His precious blood. Yes, and you believe that His blood shed atones for all your sins. Yes. And you receive him. Call upon him. All right. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you for all these men here tonight, Lord. And I just ask that you bless them, Lord, that you help them to receive you, Lord. If they're not saved, they haven't received you now, Lord. And if they have received you and are following you, Lord, that you just help them to continue to follow you, to walk in light, to walk in truth. Lord, help them to, to bind the strong man, Lord. Please bind the strong man, Lord so that they can walk in the fullness and abundance that you want to give them, Lord. Please help us all to serve you and to glorify you, Lord. Please be with all these men, Lord. Please, if there's any that are not saved, Lord, convict them that they need you, Lord, that they need to follow you, Lord. Please lift the veil off their eyes. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you all so much. Yeah. Praise the Lord.